our weirdest story from the Bible this morning isn't so much weird or a story, but it's just kind of an interesting thing that we find in Scripture, an interesting uh, kind of a mystery. So what I want to talk about this morning is the forbidden fruit that is talked about in the Garden of Eden. Now, if I ask you what you think that fruit was, what would you say? Well, most people would probably say an apple. Although I asked my daughter this yesterday and she said a grape. So maybe I'm wrong in thinking that most people think that it's an apple. I think that's what's in our collective imagination, that it was an apple. But I've always wondered why. Why do we think that? So that's what we're going to explore a little bit today. And I, I'm also going to read to you from Genesis where it talks about that forbidden fruit. And let you know, just a spoiler alert here, the Bible never says exactly what kind of fruit it is. It's just called a fruit. And so we don't know. We can't say for sure it was a grape or an apple or whatever. But this is where it comes from. So first bit comes from Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Okay, so that's the first part where God tells Adam not to eat of it. And then we come along to uh, the next chapter, chapter uh, Genesis 3, chapter, Genesis 3, chapter 3 starting with verse 1. Now, in the meantime, since God told Adam not to eat of this particular tree, um, Eve was created. Woman was created. So she didn't hear this command from God. She just kind of got it as secondhand information from Adam. So this is how chapter 3 begins. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the tree of the fruit that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. So that's it. That's, that's a bit about the forbidden fruit. It doesn't say what kind of fruit it is. So my question is, why do you think so many people just automatically think it's an apple? That's what I want to explore with you today. And they're kind of weird reasons, thus weird stories from the Bible. So uh, the first reason is that in Milton's famous epic poem, Paradise Lost, Milton calls the forbidden fruit an apple. So that's kind of got into people's collective unconscious over the years. But the reason that he called it an apple is because St. Jerome. Now St. Jerome is the guy back in the fourth century who was commissioned by the Pope to translate the Hebrew Bible into Latin. So that's the first time it had been translated from Hebrew to Latin. So he, Jerome, got to make up all these decisions of how words were to be translated. So the Hebrew word that's in question, the word that's been translated fruit, is peri, is the Hebrew word, which just means fruit. And rabbis over the years have guessed at what kind of fruit that is. They have guessed a fig, a pomegranate, a plum, a pear, a grape, a quince. There's been all these kind of speculations what that word means. Um, but Jerome, St. Jerome, when he decided to translate that, he decided to be clever. And he threw in a little pun here. Let me tell you what the pun is. So in Latin, the word for evil or bad and the word for tr for apple are the same word, malice. I'm sure you've what's still a word we use today, malice. Uh, 
So when he translated the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he used that word, malice. And then when he got to the part about the fruit, he used the same word, malice. So you see how it's kind of a little play on words, a little pun that he decided to do. In fact, um, the Latin word for apple trees, if you are into scientific terms for plants and things, is still to this day, malus pumilla. If you look it up, that will be an apple tree is what it'll say, malus pumilla. Um, so the story doesn't end there. The word malice in Jerome's time, and for a long time after that, could really mean any fleshy, seed-bearing fruit. So a pear was a kind of malice. So it was a fig or a peach or any of those kind of fruits. So, and this was still the case at the time of Milton. So many think that in Paradise Lost, he, was he wasn't referring specifically to an apple either. He was referring to any kind of fruit that kind of fit into that fleshy, seed-bearing family. Um, so you might have, if you're familiar with the Sistine Chapel, Saint, I mean, uh, Michelangelo's a fresco on the Sistine Chapel that has a serpent coiled around a fig tree. So you can see it wasn't always thought to be a, an apple tree. But the apple kind of came into popularity during um, when uh, the artwork kind of took off in Europe and all these artists kind of started painting these religious artworks. Uh, for example, in uh, 1504, um, Durer, the famous um, engraver, depicted Adam, Adam and Eve beside an apple tree. And so that's kind of where this apple trend got started. It kind of became a template for other artists like Crotch the Elder, and I'm shown here, another picture of an apple. Now, my personal theory is that people confuse the story of the forbidden fruit with the story of Snow White in the poisoned apple. And that's what I think in this, in our modern day and age anyways, they think of the apple as being evil. And so they connect it to the story of the forbidden fruit in the Bible. But I also think there's so many references to apple in our collective unconscious. There's Greek mythology, the golden apple and Aphrodite. Um, one of the labors of Hercules had to do with special apples. And there's a bunch of other examples of Greek mythology. In Norse mythology, there's apples that pop up. In the uh, legends of King Arthur, there is the Avalon means the Isle of Apples. There's the legend of Johnny Appleseed and the story of Isaac Newton with a head falling on his head and or an apple falling on his head and bam, he gets knowledge. So there's these examples time and time again of apples in our legends, in our fairy tales, in our mythology as a people. And so I think that all just kind of gets rolled into us assuming it was an apple. So we don't really know what kind of fruit it was from that tree. Could have been anything here. Could have been, could have been an apple, I guess. Could have been anything. We don't really know what it is. All we know is that apple is what most people think of and the whole situation why we think that is weird. So, see you next time for more weird stories from the Bible. Delicious.